All right, guys, I'm going to say I'm going to say pause a lot in this thing, too, so we can pause the video because um, I don't think I can do it from up here. All right. Um, so I operate on uh, uh, using a HANA table, of course, and so um, to get leg length and offset, uh, you're really dependent on x-ray. And um, up until about a year ago, um, I was still using the technique that Dr. Matta taught me in 2005, uh, which was printing out small x-rays from the C-arm on the transparency paper, putting on cover gloves, and doing manual overlays. And yeah, it's super archaic, but um, uh, it worked well for me. Um, but then I was kind of forced into technology because paper wasn't being made anymore. So I finally joined the 21st century and uh, you know started using some of these um, uh, cool, you know, technological devices and see numbers and all this shit that I never knew about before. And I was like, this has looked pretty damn good, you know, you know I could get used to this. And, uh, and then I worked with OrthoGrid on, on an overlay program because I just basically wanted to have a computer do the same thing that I was doing manually. Um, let's see, wait, listen. So, and it's just gonna, I'm a, it's a short video here that, Maybe. Oh shit. See, I already screwed it up. All right, hit play. I'm just gonna say play pause because I'm not very good at this. Hence, I was using overlays. Um, so we're gonna, uh, I'm just gonna run through a quick, a quick case because I do think there's some things um, and I am gonna talk about you know the femur and length and offset hit pause right there but i think that um that there are some important things um that you need to be aware of and and recognize um on your x-rays on your c-arm shots um to try to help you with uh, to make these these uh devices work because just because you you know type in or your machine says 4323 um may not necessarily mean the cup is an actual 4323. So um, the, the first most critical, you know, portion of this thing is to have a level pelvis before you, you start. Okay, so we bring in the C-arm shot. We have a C-arm shot right here. We're looking at it. So on my operative side, um, the landmarks I use, and um, uh, John Massanis was talking, you know, a lot about the, the um, consistent landmarks of the pelvis, which is fantastic. Because um, I, uh, I get you know geeked out on on X-rays. So when I'm trying to get my pelvis level, the first gross check is the midline of the sacrum um, to the pubic symphysis. Um, so that's just kind of a gross check to to um, uh, see if I'm level. This one looks relatively centered, okay, but. Uh, the real key um, landmarks I use are going to be my ilioischial line and teardrop. Okay? So you can see on my operative side, the ilioischial line is lateral to the teardrop, and on the contralateral side, the ilioischial line is, is touching the lateral side of the teardrop. So this pelvis is not level. Um, these things need to be symmetric um, to verify for me that that pelvis is level. Um, uh, some guys want to use the obturator foramen and try to match up, you know, shapes. But uh, in my eyes, I'm, I'm not, I can't look at two geometric shapes and, and know what they're exactly alike. Um, and I think John Cooper said earlier, he does, you know, a single reamer. Um, and that's what I do too. So, you know, we're, we're going to see that real quickly here before we advance onto the femur. You can go ahead and hit play. So on this side, I would rotate the bed towards me. Um, cause you always, and there we go. Now I'm level. Um, so, and I just scooted it over and moved fast, but it, I promise you it was level. Uh, bottom of my cup at the bottom of the teardrop, uh, all the way down the medial wall, unless somebody has a super excessive offset. Um, go ahead and hit pause now again. So I forget who said it in the earlier session, uh, but they made a comment, you know, we have we think of length and offset as as femoral issues but you're really locked in to 
what you can do with length and offset based on where you put your cup. So if your cup doesn't have a proper um, center, hip center rotation, then uh, whatever you've templated is, is no longer going to be applicable. Um, if you raise the hip center, you may not be able to catch up on your length. If you lower the hip center, you may have a need a super low neck cut. So don't think of offset and, and length as, as femoral issues um, because um, the die is kind of cast when you put the cup in. Now, if you put your cup in a good position, then you're going to be A-OK. -okay. You can go ahead and hit play again. So I do, I do a, a single reamer. Um, if you're going to do single reamer, um, you know, reaming of the acetabulum, obviously you need to be confident that you're the correct size. Um, and you need to have sharp reamers, um, you know, because even when I have a larger cup, like a, you know, 58 or 60 cup, uh, I'm still just reaming one time with, the, with a large reamer. Um, so the reamers need to be sharp. So when I'm doing my leg links, we got our cup in, now we got some trials. Go ahead and hit pause there for a second. Now Brian's going to talk about the, the, uh, using the AP pelvis, um, you know, with this same program. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't use the AP pelvis, uh, and it's not because I don't think it's, um, it's inaccurate if it's, if, again, you're, you're giving the computer good information. You have to give it, you have to give it legs that are equal abduction adduction you also have to give it legs that are equal in rotation because it's going to identify it has the ai that automatically identifies your your teardrops and it automatically identifies the most medial part of the lesser trochanter but simple things like uh, just three or four degrees of abduction adduction will suddenly change what that's going to tell you as far as the length and offset, um, which is why I choose to do an overlay technique. Um, that's just what I prefer. You can hit play again. So when I get my trial components in, uh, I'm going to come and get an x-ray of, um, of the contralateral side. I like contralateral. You're gonna, we click a button that locks that as our comparison side. Then I'm going to come to my, to my operative side, and one thing that I should have pointed out, um, I always pay attention, hit pause real quick again, I always pay attention to the rotation um, on the first side, the rotation of the pelvis. So the ilioischial line on that first one we just saw was just on the lateral side of the teardrop. Okay? So when I come over to, to my operative side, I have to get the same picture. If I don't get the same picture, you can't do the overlay. And it's going to throw off your measurements, mainly of, of offset, because you can always use the, tier, the bottom of the teardrop, no matter where the ilioischial line is on it, to get your leg lengths. But rotation is going to throw off your measurement of offset. So I'll have on the C-arm, I put the contralateral picture on the right side of the C-arm, uh, right image or screen, and then I come to my operative side, and now I have to get the same rotation here on the pelvis. And I just have them, you know, unlock the, the orbit, and I just rotate it a little bit till it, till it looks good. You can hit play. Because we have, to, we have to have the pelvis match up exactly, the hemipelvises, um, if we're going to get proper control of length and offset. Um, and uh, it doesn't take long um, to do this once you get accustomed to what you're looking at and can pick up the things quickly. This is much quicker. This saves me time comparative to printouts. So here we go. So I'm trying to line up the, line up the hemipelvis so, so you can move on the screen you can do it with a finger a glove finger or I have my or have my rep do it and then once you get the pelvis exactly matched you hit anchor anchor now puts the center of rotation in the center well in the center of rotation of the um, of the um, hip so that now you can abduct adduct the leg to get the femurs parallel hit pause right there yep yeah, right there so now my femurs are parallel. It's identified my lesser trochanters on both sides. So I've got a situation here where my offset is correct, 
but I'm short. And so I think this is a, I think it's a high a trial that I think here is a high offset and a zero. So now I've got a decision to make. Now um, it's a, a slender female, and I'm really, really conscious about increasing offsets in, in slender females. They, they, they dislike it um, tremendously if you make their hips stick out more on one side than the other. So I'm really constantly conscious about, about offset increases in anyone, but especially slender female. So option of going just to a plus head is not an option to me. So a standard offset though, is gonna reduce me by six millimeters of offset compared to this high. Now, when we use the plus balls, and so plus three five is another thing. A plus three five ball, because Zimmer comes in increments of 3.5, does not mean it's 3.5 millimeters of increased leg length, okay? So this stem has a 135 degree neck angle, which is 45 to the floor. So, you know, if you, you know, remember trigonometry and the A squared, B squared, C squared thing, for every 3.5 millimeters, on that 45 degree angle, you gain 2.1 of length and 2.1 of offset. And now you guys in here do post your approach like, what is this fucking guy talking about? God, millimeters, you know, but, but we care about this stuff, you know, and, and, it, and it gives us something to do, I guess. You can go ahead and hit play. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we, uh, I'm doing math to try to figure out, you know, exactly how much I'm going to, you know, gain um, by going to a standard and then going to plus balls. Um, so took out the trials. We're going to see the, the real components in here. Um, and so on the AP pelvis, it says I'm minus two, minus five, or minus three, minus five. Um, we're going to do an overlay, and that's probably pretty close. There's a little bit different abduction, adduction. You can see the vertical lines on the um, uh, the vertical white lines there that, that do give you somewhat of a of a guide um, to try to make your abduction, you know, adduction the same. Um, but I think I think we end up I end up going to a standard offset and a uh, and a plus three five head. Uh, which is going to leave her just a teeny bit, um, a teeny bit short. Um, it's going to end up being a couple millimeters short, but I'm just so fearful of increasing offset in these, in these young gals, and I'm not worried about stability. So I don't mind, you know, I would rather leave somebody a tiny bit short, and these are the final implants here. We're just a couple millimeters short, uh, but I'd rather leave somebody a couple millimeters short than increase their leg length or their offset a couple millimeters. Um, and then we're going to go to a, a second case here, and I'll get through it quick so we can, we can carry on. Um, a, a similar situation, except this is a male, um, but a very, very similar situation in the aspect of my initial trials um, are going to be with a high offset and zero ball again. And the AP pelvis says I'm way short. Um, so I go to the contralateral side. I'm going to internally rotate the leg a little bit to try to get, um, I don't think we have any talks on this, but Joel talks about this a lot, um, lining up the anterior posterior landmarks of the greater trochanter to, to max, know your maximum offset. Um, but we're going to do an overlay here, and we're going to come up with a, and this is me just constantly rotating the C-arm because I'm trying to get the ilioischial line teardrop relationship to be the same as the other side because it's, it's critical. You have to have it the same, otherwise uh, you can't, there's no reads. You can see the, the hemipelvis here. Because I have good rotational control and I recognize what, where I need it to be, my hemipelvis lines up perfect. And then I can hit anchor, I can bring the leg out, and this one I'm way short. Offsets, this, offsets good, but I'm way short. So um, the treatment's gonna be very similar to the, to the other gal. Um, in the aspect of you know going to a standard offset, I'm dropping six, but then going to a plus seven ball, I'm going to gain you know 4.2 back. So I'm really only decreasing a standard plus seven um, is relatively the same offset as a high offset zero ball. Um, it's not exactly; it's about a millimeter and a half less of offset, 
And there's so much wiggle room on air on internal external rotation because maybe I internally rotate that guy, you know, another three degrees and all of a sudden the offset increases. So, so uh, you know, this isn't like exact science, but um, uh, it's as close as I can get to trying to make sure that, um, that I don't have leg length inequalities. And then you can see here, the pelvis lines up perfect. Um, so we got it anchored and then when we bring the, the leg out, you know, those that yellow and blue dot really match up quite well. Um, but this is the, the modern day version of, you know, an, an old technique that uh, up until a year ago I was still printing stuff out. All right, thanks guys.